kick it away. And deep for Texas, Matthew Golden, wide receiver, transfer from Houston, and DeAndre Moore. Now the fans will tell you, new conference, unchanged passion between these two fan bases, our side versus your side, and nowhere to hide on the Saturday in the Cotton Bowl. Sit back and enjoy this. Schmidt drives the ball into the end zone, and Texas and Ewers will take over at the 25-yard line. UT San Antonio, a non-contact play that led to the injury that Holly was describing. Says he's pain-free, been letting it rip. Rust has not been a problem for him. Each of the last three years, Kirk, he's missed multiple games for injury. When he's come back, he's been sharp in the first game back. Yeah, going back to 22, he, had, he missed three games prior to the Red River rivalry with that broken collarbone and ended up coming back for this game and threw four touchdowns and a 49-0 win over OU. So I don't expect a veteran like this to have any rust. They'll attack accordingly. Lots of new skill players for Texas, both in the backfield and at the receiver position. And yours straight back has time and now runs out of it and falls forward. It's a sack on the first play as they leave with about five. And Ethan Downs, who had a huge game against Texas a year ago, made the play. Yeah, great coverage downfield. Here's the Home Depot impact player for the Red River rivalry. Look at Texas and his offense. Start with Jake Morris, the four-year starter at center. Jaden Blue, the, the running back. They've had a lot of injuries, but he'll do a nice job. Denny Stutzman, 28, will be all over the field. And R. Mason Thomas off the edge with pressure. Blue plows forward for a couple, and it's going to be a very quick third and long. This Texas offensive line, all of them from the state of Texas. Experience season as good to get as it gets. Kelvin Banks, one of the top up, uh, draft prospects on the big board. Majors has made his 47 start today. Yeah, he's one of our impact guys. And this is what OU wanted. Get him behind the sticks and then get exotic. Change up your looks on third down. Three-man rush. Ewers has plenty of time. Fires across the middle. It's too high. And it's an interception. It's ruled that it was caught by Billy Bowman Jr., the safety playmaker. We'll take a look at this, but Ewers' first downfield throw was an overthrow. Well, he misses a wide-open receiver. Texas with a good design here to try to keep Isaiah Bond. They want to clear him out. Watch the defense run. They're showing one thing. They go to another. But watch this open up right here. This crosser right in the middle of the field. He ends up missing that, throwing it high. And OU with a major turnover here. If, it, if the play call ends up holding up, looks like he got his hands under that and secured that for an interception. Just like last year, Ewers came out through a pick in the first few plays. In fact, threw interceptions on the first two possessions yeah. for Texas. He had three turnovers total with the two picks and a fumble. So Caught Mike, through that, though, last year, remember. Michael Hawkins Jr. now takes over in Texas territory. His first snap as the first true freshman starter for OU in this game. And he's on the move, and he flips a short pass. And the catch is made by Brennan Thompson, the reliable Five foot nine receiver skips ahead for about 13 and a first down. Let's look on the other side, the Home Depot impact players. Oklahoma going fast. Thompson just saw him. Barnes in the backfield. On the other side, Anthony Hill and Colin Simmons, the young freshman, number 11. He's done a really good job this year. Already four sacks on the year. Hawkins again. It's a keeper. Steps out of a tackle. Eludes a couple more Longhorns. You see the twitchiness of him. He didn't get a chance to get going. He's got great speed, but he is hard to bring down. Anthony Hill finally did so. Yeah, 6'1", about 196-pound true freshman, and it's very important for him to, to realize in a game like this, if he can get three or four, get down and get three or four. You can't always stay up, dance around left and right against a good defense that flows like this. If he can get four or five yards, get it and get down. Take to Barnes, throw to the end zone, and a 
it's just over the hands of J.J. Hester. Malik Muhammad in coverage. Downfield shots have been difficult to produce for this offense. Hit a big one in the win against Auburn, but not many this season. Yeah, and, and I think a big part of that, think about this, guys. The offensive line, they've had 12 different combinations up front. you got a true freshman who's in for the starting quarterback. And look at this. Five receivers. Your top five receivers out with injury. So you're looking at the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth receivers that these guys are working with with a quarterback who's just kind of settling in as a true freshman. That's a tough thing. Deion Burke's absence today is the big one. Top target is the slot receiver. Gavin Sawchuk got a hurry here. Play clock at one, and they'll have to spend a timeout. So the usual frenetic start for the Red River rivalry, a turnover for Texas. Oklahoma on the move. Trying to draw first blood, but facing a third and ten here. And, and for people that, that aren't familiar with Oklahoma, they, they're usually toe to toe with Texas. The way these rosters are built, but because of the injuries we just talked about with the with the wide receivers, because of the injuries they've had on the offensive line, because they have a true freshman now in Hawkins in for Jackson Arnold. This is the game where they have to win the turnover margin. They've got to get a short field. Here's first example and opportunity of doing that. And they've got to win special teams and hidden yardage. And all, everything has to fall their way to pull off this upset. And the very first series, they get an interception to give Hawkins a short field. Now it's a matter of trying to capitalize when you get these kind of opportunities that you just, you just created for yourself. If they can't make a first down, they'd like to at least get a little closer for Tyler Keltner who's the kicker for Oklahoma. He was hitting from about 50 yards in, in pregame. It's a swirling win yep. on the field. And important in this game to remember, the crowd is split from the 50 to the left and to the right. To the left is all burnt orange. He's going in to the loudest part of the stadium with the crowd obviously favoring the horns off to your left. Motion out to a single back look. That's Saw Chuck. And they fake it to him. Hawkins on the move. Slips a tackle. Takes a shot and gets down. He's about four yards short of the first down. Vernon Broughton got him. Yeah, but but it gives him a, a chance to have a decision here. The positive yards and with a quarterback that's as mobile as he is, you always want to be aggressive. And this looks like it's four down. Nope, they are going to send a kicker out. So that effort there, he bounced off a couple would-be tacklers. The effort there gives the kicker a shot to get him up by three here early. Keltner in his sixth season of college football was East Tennessee State. Nice long career there. Was at Florida State as the backup a year ago. You have to be alert for fakes. There's a lot of them over the years. This from 44 yards if he kicks it. Got to hurry to get the snap off. They just do. And Keltner pops it up and missed it. So Oklahoma gets the takeaway early, but comes up empty after a nice drive. Talked about opportunities. The defense did their job on the first series of Quinn Ewers. They got the interception, got into field goal range, looking for three points to take the lead. Don't take advantage of it. Mentioned that rust hasn't really been a factor for Ewers previously. Did throw an interception in both of these games, which came off missing multiple games to injury. Got that pick out of the way early, but that was a that was a rough throw. Golden was wide open, missed him, yeah. but it doesn't cost Texas. On the move again, flips it down, and the catch is made by Juan Davis, the seldom used tight end. Just his third catch of the season for a short game. And Oklahoma right now, and Brent Venables, remember, he is incredibly multiple with his defenses. We talked to Steve Sarkeesian yesterday, and he said, man, first thing we got to do is they basically run three different defenses, a base defense, a nickel defense, and a three safety defense. We got to figure out how they want to defend this and then make our adjustments within the first few series. Second and long handoff. This is Quintravian Wisner, and he picks up a couple. So it's going to be another third down for Texas. They'll need four. They John Terry made the stop. It's kind of a, a fun battle, a game within the game. Steve Sarkeesian, one of the most respected play callers, and does a great job of scheming up defenses. On the other side, Brent Venables, and the way he dials up defense, and the way he gives you one look and goes to another. These guys have a lot of respect for each other, and right now they're in a chess match. Each will show looks the other side has not seen on tape. Yeah. You can count on that. Blue is the back. Oklahoma brings some late pressure. Ewers again down the middle, and that's another bad throw. 
He had Isaiah Bond wide open that time, so two downfield shots, and Ewers not close in either one of them. No, and, and I think he, he he got a little bit impatient, might have done a pre-read before the ball is snapped on these two safeties. Watch this safety move, and watch the receiver get vertical. There's nobody downfield. He could have lobbed this ball out here and had a touchdown because the safety didn't run with him. Instead, he tried to fire it in there, and I would say that's, that's another miss there by Quinn Ewers. First ever college punt for Ian Ratliff. Michael Kern, who was the starting punter, the true freshman, out with an ankle injury. So the first punt is not a pretty one. And Peyton Bowen takes it on the run for Oklahoma, and it'll be tackled at the 34. We'll keep an eye on Texas's punting situation. Potential nerves in this big game. There's a flag down after the 38-yard punt, so we'll check that. General the turn, personal foul, face mask, kicking team number 25. Identified 25, Jelani McDonald. Oklahoma will get good field position again when you come back. The SEC on ABC is presented by Burger King. You rule. And in part by Bud Light, who reminds you to drink responsibly. Let's go to Holly in this stadium divided, as always. Well, the Red River is a real geographical boundary where Oklahoma and Texas are divided. And the stadium is, too. It reflects real life right down the 50-yard line. I'm here in the Texas section. And, Laura Rutledge, you're over in the Oklahoma section. It is loud all the time, but one of the best places to watch a college football game. Absolutely, Holly. This atmosphere is unparalleled. And over here on the Oklahoma side, I have the golden hat because Oklahoma won this game last year. Danny Stutzman told me he never thought he would care as much about a golden hat. We're on the famous trophy coming up. This is Gavin Sawchuk who gets the carry. Yeah, the 50-yard line is a stand-in for the Red River. <laughs> right. No doubt. So Texas is trying to weather a shaky start. They really the interception, are. the overthrow, the bad pump. They only netted 32 yards with a penalty. Yeah. On to that. Oh, you started at the plus 45. Now at their own 49. Missed a field goal. What would they do with this opportunity? Javante Barnes around the right end. Plows forward. Oklahoma, if you get, get the running game going today, that'd be a huge bonus. It hasn't been consistent. No, it hasn't. This is a good job with two backs in that backfield. You get a lead back right here with, with Salchuk's able to lead around. Good blocks on the perimeter that time by the receiver and the tight end, Jake Roberts. Had a nice seam there on the outside. Downfield blocks were good. Barnes, an emerging force in the backfield. Tough guy, explosive. His vision is improving. Two back look. Jake Roberts, the tight end, flanking the formation on the left. Play fake. Hawkins steps up. A long throw is incomplete. Fired the ball, trying to get it over to Thompson. This is a, this is your concern with it with a young quarterback who's very very athletic. There's really no reason to panic in his pocket. Look at the pocket, and look at him. Just just step up once, and then keep your feet under you and throw. You see how he's following through there with that right foot. Just looks really off balance, and it affects his accuracy. Just step up and make the throw. Hawkins under immediate pressure, and he'll be sacked all the way back at the 41 as Michael Taft came on the safety blitz. Well, a great job by Taft reacting to the motion going away from him. Watch his motion go away from him, and then he reacts. You can see him already communicating, and once his motion goes, he's going to come down. I don't think Hawkins ever saw him in the back. As they set up the screen there, he definitely didn't see it. So great job of hesitating, waiting, and then getting that blitz after the ball is snapped to fool the young freshman quarterback. Good pass rush for Texas, 14th sack of the season. That was a 13-yard loss on first down. Or excuse me, second down brings up third and 23. Screen quickly. Thompson dragged down immediately by Anthony Hill. And the Sooners squander an opportunity. And this Texas defense can fly to the football, and you're someone limited because you don't have a lot of receivers with experience. First five are down. you got a freshman quarterback, so you're doing things like this. Look at Texas anticipating a draw or a screen on third down. So both times, the Texas offense put their own defense in an unfavorable position on these first two series, and both times, the Texas defense steps up. 
the lefty Luke Elzinga to punt it away for Oklahoma Silas Bolden the Texas returner standing at his seven yard line and there was a flinch on the OU side back up Elzinga five more yards Ball start offense number three five yard penalty fourth down if this becomes a situation where punters are important in the field position kind of game Elzinga very experienced a transfer from Central Michigan the last three years and mentioned Ian Ratliff who'd never punted in a college game before today oh you feels that they can win these kind of situations pinning Texas back winning the hidden yards with special teams and another whistle another false start They're backing up Elzinga five yards and more. movement again on the left side of OU false start for the snap offense number 20 five yard penalty fourth down I guess you'd rather get those out of the way in a punt than an offensive snap if you had to choose that's 10 yards though you know, it's 10 yards of unnecessary penalties it moves OU back and if a team that wants to win the field position battle and keep Quinn Ewers back inside his own 20 had a real shot there with where they were punting. We'll try this again. And they started this drive at their own 49. That's where the drive started. And now they're punting from their own 36. Michael Taft's sack, first big defensive play of the game for Texas. Zinga. Against the punt up and the wind kind of carries it down and it's going to bounce sideways and now eventually will roll dead at the Texas 11 yard line. Worked out okay after all that. So Queen Ewers, first action in a month and not sharp so far. Well, first couple series for Quinn Ewers in Texas, they've had opportunities. This first play of the game could have settled in there and remember he's coming off a few games where he hasn't played. Here's another missed opportunity on the interception. He sailed that one into the hands of Bowman, who made the interception. And then Harry Moose missed the safety, stepping up out of position. Could have put that one way down by that SEC logo and had a touchdown. So they're still trying to get him settled into this game and get it to slow down for him. And the ball off to Blue, who came in motion. The suitors all over it. Danny Stutzman. Met him there and drove him back the top tackler in this Oklahoma defense for a few years. Well, these linebackers are keyed in on these guards and watch how quickly they get outside because the guards are pulling. It's almost like they know the play call. They are taking off. There's nothing slowing them down and that's not on the offensive linemen. That's on the linebackers doing their homework this week and saying when they get in this formation and this look, they're running this play. They were they're beating the back. Where to go? Great prep. Yes, that's been very savvy. Nobody prepares any better than he does. Ewers under pressure again, flips it down. This is Wisner hit really hard. You can hear the shot up as Malone. Kip Lewis. Man, that, <laughs> Malone. Yeah, they, this defense, man, they fly around. That was the thing that night they played against Tennessee. Their offense had their issues. They replaced the quarterback. They got the injuries up front. One thing you know about Oklahoma, with Brent Venables, the head coach, they are flying around with bad intentions. Another third down for this Texas offense. One of the best in the country converting third down so far at 53 percent. But OU not an average defense. And rush four. Ewers has time to scan and now roll out. He'll take off. He's not going to get there with his legs. Doesn't have blazing speed. Didn't really commit to the run. And Grayson Halton tracks him down and becomes another punt. You know, I don't know if it's the nerves of the game. I mean, he's a veteran. It, something has him a bit out of sync. I mean, it, this is rushing four. And look at the receivers. I mean, he's got space here. He's got space there. He's got guys that are open. I know he's starting to run, but that's not his game. Taking off and trying to get a first down is not what Quinn Ewers specializes in. He's got to get his feet under him, take off, keep his eyes downfield, and get the ball out of his hands. Such open a veteran. I think we assume, Kirk, we, he would look like the Ewers that lit up Michigan in the big house. Yeah, right. The other game this year in a big stage, and he was surgical from the start. Ratliff, this is a better punt for the first timer. And Bowen drifts back and makes a fair catch. 46 yard punt. So here comes Michael Hawkins. He played high school football at Kyler Murray's high school. 
until his senior year, trained under Kevin Murray, his dad, and then went to Emerson and McKinney for his senior season. Michael Hawkins Sr. was a DB for Oklahoma. Didn't actually play against Texas, but played for one season and then bounced around the NFL for a while. Pretty amazing. First true freshman to start against Texas. There's his dad there trying to cool off. Touchdown will probably do that for him. His brother Malik is a cornerback prospect in the class of 25. He'll join him next season in Norman. Looking to run on first down, goes sideways, and he'll be slammed down. Nowhere to go. And ran in right into Colin Simmons, the talented true freshman. Laura? Well, Chris, down here on the sideline, Brent Venables just speaking to his quarterback, saying the big plays are there, just trust it. Now, you're not seeing any frustration from Hawkins Jr. because, as you guys know, he is so chill. He's focused. He's dialed in, as always. Venables also pointing out to the rest of the offense, hey, some of these personnel groupings, I can tell Texas doesn't like them. Venables just very confident that Hawkins would not be overwhelmed by the moment. He felt the pressure of this game actually might bring out the best in him. On the move, flips a short pass, has a man wide open, and that's Zion Kearney, the true freshman, left alone in the zone, picked up 15 there in Texas territory. Uh, the respect they have for Hawkins. Watch Anthony Hill when he sees the quarterback take off. He's got to get outside, but he throw it right behind him on that curl route. So the respect for the legs of Hawkins opens that up. See on the Oklahoma side of the 49. Now they're in Texas territory with a short gain around right end. I think the big thing, like I said, in the opening series for Michael Hawkins, he'll learn as he continues to go on. He's so dangerous with his legs that he doesn't have to always be concerned about trying to always make the big play and being the Superman. You know, today's one of those games where you take what you can get. A punt's not bad. Trust your defense and field position to win the game. Just don't make a critical error today. Uh, well put, but you'd like to take advantage of the opportunities. They've yeah. dominated field position. And off inside, Barnes makes a nice little cutback. Gets down within about a yard and a half of the market. It'll be third down. One way you handle the big guys in the middle. Low lay that time. They just read him. Playing with some tempo here in third and short. Barnes again. Runs into a wall, but leans forward and has a first down inside the Texas 40. Good push by that offensive line. We've talked about the injuries to the receivers, this offensive line. It's good to see them finally getting some guys back healthy. Yeah, same combo as last week. That's the first yeah, time this year. First time all year. 12 different combos. See, Tarquin's back at left tackle. Jake Taylor came back against Auburn at right tackle. The center, Branson Hickman, who missed a bunch of time, a veteran from SMU. It's good to see him back at an ankle injury. Off the play of fake, Hawkins took a peek downfield, dodges pressure, and now checks it down far sideline. That's Bauer Sharp, the tight end, one of the alpha leaders of this offense, a former high school quarterback. He picked up eight. Pretty good push right here by Texas, and because of the ability that he has, not only with quick feet, but strength to pull out of that. That ball almost came out of his hands. But how sudden is he with his hands? It's not just quick feet. He, I mean, he makes up his mind. He's got a quick trigger, too. Oklahoma now 10 plays. This will be their 11th play in plus territory, and they don't have any points. Texas has it across midfield. On second and two, Hawkins in space. Jitterbugs his way for another first down about the 28. Sawchuck helped him out with a block, but they moved the sticks again. That was a very slow, deliberate play because he's so athletic. Trey Moore, the transfer from UTSA, just out in space, 6-3. Very tough for him to change direction with Hawkins. Almost looked like a broken play, but the athletic ability gives him the first down. Single back look. Sawchuck around the right end, gets some blocks and another big gain on first down. Got about seven more. Derek Williams drove him out. Boy, they're getting to that edge pretty, pretty easily on that right side. Trey Moore that time didn't even get blocked. He came underneath. I think he was expecting to get blocked by the polar Jacob Sexton, but they're getting out to that right edge and getting positive yards here. Playing with not a frenetic tempo, but just enough tempo to Try to wear out these Texas defenders on a very hot day. Hand it off to Barnes, who cuts back and runs right into trouble. 
heavy traffic there. He'll lose a couple of yards. That's again Colin Simmons and Alfred Collins combining. Yeah, that time we talked about how they didn't do a good job of setting the edge. Watch this guy. He's a true freshman. Here come the Polars. Can he get around him? Works around him, and then he's right there to make the tackle. Great job of avoiding Jacob Sexton, a left guard. Olays him, and then lowers the boom there on the back. Great play. That kid's going to be a star. So final 30 seconds of the opening quarter. Oklahoma facing a third and six. Hawkins running out of time and just throws it into the bench. Heavy pressure from Anthony Hill. Was he still inside the tackle box when he made that throw? Uh, they spy him here. Smart call by Texas. Spy him with this guy and this guy. So no matter which way he goes, you got a couple different guys that can run with him. Simmons, the freshman, or the veteran here, Anthony Hill. Good job there on that call to not allow him to escape the pocket on third down. Second try here now for Tyler Keltner. Into this breeze. Missed it line from 44. This is from two yards closer. And this one will go through the uprights. And Oklahoma does draw first blood. It's taken a while. It was an 11 play drive covering 38 yards. They've completely controlled field position against Sargassian's team. And finally jump on top. Yeah, they've had their opportunities. Three different times. I mean, they're lucky way to do it. They were able to come away with any points. And the, the way this first quarter went, 14 plays in Texas territory. This is what Brett Venables envisioned. You know, he thought if we could, we could just do the little things in a rivalry game, we could put some pressure on Texas. If we can get them pinned back and we can get some turnovers, one quarter, mission accomplished. But we got three to go. So Keeson's talked about his team facing real adversity for the first time this season. They really haven't been in a tight battle. Mississippi State hung around for a while, never got the feeling the Longhorns were threatened. Now they're behind for the first time yeah. all season, and with a quarterback that's just not at all settled in yet. No. Now, at any moment he could, but right now, yeah, he has not. Texas back to work from the 25 after the touchback. By the way, you know the other two teams that have not trailed this year? There were three coming into today. Texas. The Army. Army. The one again. The one big. Oh, my gosh. They're, they are on fire. What's right the third? Now. The third one's Indiana. Huh? Indiana, Texas before today. And Army, the only three that have never trailed this year. Now, we know yours is not going to panic. He's been through a lot. He's come up big in some big games. You, you go to Alabama and win. You play a strong playoff oh, yeah. game. He came up short against Washington. His big game pedigree is is pretty clear. He just needs a throw or two to yeah. get in spread, some rhythm here. Spread him out. Quick throws. Get his get him in rhythm. Get his confidence going. You spread it out. First down pitch to the edge, and Isaiah Bond gets forward for about five. And that'll be the final play. End of the first quarter here in Dallas. 3-0 Oklahoma Longhorns looking for their first first down. Back after this message to the word from your local ABC station. You're watching the SEC on ABC. What, five? They've been a pretty elite defense, or offense, I should say, converting on third and long. But again, this is Oklahoma. Viewers scanning the field. Flags come out. Throws it in. It's caught by DeAndre Moore. But a flag early in the play. Completion was good into Oklahoma territory for 26. Yes, yeah, but here's Steve Marlowe. Yeah, little pressure. They brought the blitz, but they dropped a couple of the D linemen, played zone behind it. Holding. Holding. Defense number four. Got Des Malone in the corner, so the 26-yard gain will stand, and maybe that's the throw that gets viewers going. Uh, that's a nice one. Yep, first time we saw him make a play, used to seeing him make a play from inside the pocket. This time it's outside. What a job there by Moore. Kind of the glue of that wide receiver room. They're going to take probably a, a very close look at that one. Moore Remember, there was a penalty on the, on, the, on the field regardless against Des Malone on that hole, but... It's a good effort to get that foot down. I think it's a toe tap. I think there was some green between the toe yeah. and the line. Not much. 
try to rebuild this receiving core, Kirk. You're talking about guys like Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, Ooh. Jordan Winnington, the tight end, Jadavian Sanders. That's 217 receptions combined lost. And DeAndre Moore, one of those guys, is trying to step in and yeah. fill that gap. You throw Jonathan Brooks, like you said, on top of that. I mean, it's everybody. I mean, and they've done a really good job of retooling through the, the portal and some of the young guys growing up. Gunnar Helm has stepped up at tight end. That, that was a heck of a job of getting that left foot down. Got a lot of receivers. You said they have six that they have confidence in. But the guy that really has emerged as the leader is Moore, who just made that the effort to come up with his catch. This will be tough to see from this angle here. Again, ruled a catch. Did that left foot. Is there any space at all? Any blade of grass there? After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Hey guys, this is extremely tight. That that one angle there, though, it, it's not indisputable. So we're going to go on a stands. Yeah, the white shoes there helped him out. Sorry, like Bill Lemonye from buzzing in there from the home <laughs> office. Billy, really, we appreciate it. That was a close call. So Texas is first snap in Oklahoma territory. Muir's first downfield completion. That's their first first down of the game. Yep. Jeez. Oh, first quarter back in their end. Treading water. Wisner makes a cut. Physical run works hard to pick up about four. That's one way you can settle yours into the game is try to get that running game established. Take all the attention and pressure off the passing game. Go a little tempo like this. Meisner again over the left side and he'll fall forward. He's near the marker at the 34. It will be a first down. So now they get the running game going a little bit. Yep, got, a, got, got some momentum. You got a little bit of rhythm going now, going fast to be able to try to get this Oklahoma aggressive defense slowing down a little bit. Yours checks it down, waited a long time to do so, and making two men miss and still going before getting knocked down is Wisner. It's a two-yard game, but he did well to avoid a loss. Got around Stutzman and Guy Walker. Yeah, it's tough to do. Two of the better players on that defense. You know, Blue and Wisner both get involved in the passing game. It's not just the receivers you got to worry about when it comes to Sarkeesian trying to get space created against any kind of defense he faces. That time, Oklahoma count for the back. They accounted for the back. Just didn't make the tackle. Second and long, Sooners crowd the line, bring pressure, ball is out quickly, and the catch is made. And galloping down the sidelines and cartwheeling down for a first down is Gunnar Helm, the tight end, 21 yards. This guy is a weapon. Yeah, it, he is. He's become that weapon zone again off that blitz. But look at that, another missed tackle. The time it's Lewis Carter. Look at all the yards after this, after this missed tackle for a first down and now down to the 11-yard line. He is a weapon out of Cherry Creek in the Denver area. Agile guy, big 250-pounder, but great ball skills. Man, he was a nightmare for Michigan's defense. Jaden Blue is now the back. He's got it. Has to evade traffic in the backfield. Quick penetration from Desan McCullough. Picked up nothing. And McCullough's a big guy. It was reports that he might be coming back this week. Another Sooner that's been out. It's good to see him back. And yeah, foot injury. He hasn't played yeah. at all this year. And yeah. 6'5", 235, kind of a hybrid guy. You can see him, a bit of a limp there coming off the field. They, they've got him on a pitch count. Probably play him about 15 or 20 snaps based on situational opportunities that they have today. Blue and Wisner in the backfield. Bolden comes in motion. He's a blocker. They pitch it on the edge. Breaking a tackle. Falling forward is Jaden Blue. These are such tough matchups for a defense. These backs out of the back. Yeah. Oh, they had the football leverage. You had three different Sooners around the ball. But these are tough guys to bring down. They're not just quick, but they're powerful. You, you really got to wrap them up. You can't just hope that a, a, a thud or just using force is going to bring them down. They've got too good a balance. Deep six. First down at the one-yard line. Ewers on the move. Throws it back. Helm's got it. And Gunnar Helm dives to the end zone. And Texas 
after a slow start, jumps on top. Beautiful play design. Yeah, that's all Sark right there. Watch this design. The AT&T clicker will show you. Here's your receiver right here, Helm, the tight end. A lot of attention going to the offense is right. Look at the defense react. Nobody's back there to deal with Helm. You've got one guy. He gets picked up right there by the left tackle, Kelvin Banks, and he's able to get into the end zone. Really good call there on third down by Sarkeesian. Helm was blocking R. Mason Thomas, the dangerous pass rusher for the Sooners. Once he realized Helm left him, he was, oops, he got me, and they threw the ball over his head right. to a wide open tight end. So Texas takes it. 75 yards in 10 plays and the Longhorns on top now 7-3. No drier weather here. It's a windy and hot. One of the hottest temperatures at kickoff in Red River rivalry history. Nine Great. Degrees. Good. Low humidity though, Kirk. That's the upside. Yeah, the dew point is down. Thank goodness. <laughs> Viewers in that drive. Six of seven, spread the ball around, five different receivers, the sideline round some more, got the drive going, used the backs, and then finishes it off with the tight end, Gunnar Helm. Combination of quick throws, that throw that you're talking about, the running game, Sark able to call some aggressive plays in that red area to come away with seven points. OU's got to respond here. Sam Franklin, a chance to return the kick from the four-yard line. And picks his way, broke a tackle, but dangerous for a moment there, brought down at the 29. Holly? Well, Quinn Ewers emotions on the sideline after being out a month have been very interesting after the interception He came over just clapped his hands But then went over and tried to encourage the wide receivers encourage others instead of worrying about himself He has been calm despite this difficult start But after that last last touchdown a fist pump in the air Then he came right back over sat down and again calm as he looked at his iPad Kirk I know you love that doesn't get too high doesn't yep. get too low locked in all about that next series good or bad He's showing some maturity again today, just like he did in this game a year ago. Hawkins will not have to show maturity as the Sooners are behind for the first time today. Looking to throw in first down. Now on the move, will take off and get shoved out of bounds at the line of scrimmage there. Short game. So actually, actually lost three yards. Yeah, that's a that's a play again. I, I know he relies on his feet. He has confidence in his feet. But in the college game, he's going to have to learn to throw the to throw that football away. Once he gets outside of the pocket, there's nowhere to scramble. Instead of losing some yardage, just throw it away. Easy. Flinch on the left side of the offensive line. Yeah, that's Tarquin, the left tackle. They won at Auburn. It was a gutsy comeback, but penalties were a problem. They had 10 penalties against the Tigers, eight of them yep. in Auburn territory, most of them on the offense, and very costly penalties. Yeah. They were lucky to escape. Hawkins ignited a late rally. Defense made a pick six to win it. Gritty is the word that Venables uses to describe this team a lot. I think it's one of his favorite words. Yeah, you really don't know how your team, who your team is, the intangibles, how they're wired until they respond to adversity. Timeout. Texas. Oh, okay. Texas called a timeout. So it won't be a penalty. So Keishan spends one on defense. And we'll step aside here. Early second quarter in Dallas. Plane worked out great. Um, it was it was pretty wild. There's there's the itinerary. Two hours, uh, what, two hours and a half in the air. It was three, about a th little over three in the air. Uh, we left game day early, like at uh, what 10:45 Eastern, somewhere around there. Behind the six on second down, Hawkins is on the move, fakes the flip, and he'll just scoot out of bounds after a short gain and he'll set up third down now. The, the, need about eight. The biggest biggest thing you're watching in this game right now is can you imagine Oklahoma trying to survive this game with all the injuries and sustaining drives going 12 and 15 plays. That's what Texas wants. Make this young quarterback with all these young receivers have to drive. Give them three. Give them five. But don't give up any explosives. Here comes heavy pressure Hawkins. Spins away from it, takes a shot, and almost threw it into trouble. A flag comes out. Gavin Holmes broke up the pass. David Benda 
was chasing the quarterback did he hit him late that's the only thing I can think of that's where the flag came in right after the hit on the quarterback and you want to talk about keeping Oklahoma in the game she two flags down by the way Kirk one is in yeah, the defensive the secondary 50. at the yep. 50 yard line so they were both on Texas defensive holding decline we're just going to do this with the old fashioned way no microphone roughing the passer and that's going to be on David Bender the speedy senior linebacker and that gives Oklahoma first down out of the 45 Yeah, balls released and then the follow through I mean it's in the world you live in today I mean all of us it's easy to look at that and say hey he's already starting to come after him Bill what do you think of the hit right there he gave me body language that said he knew the ball was away and I'm going to say hello with a shoulder while I'm here so I support the call okay <laughs> Where are the body language when you're in the presence of these veteran <laughs> officials? So a mistake by a veteran sets Oklahoma up oh, and a big hit. Catapulting in the air there was Hester as Jalen Gilbo got him. Wow. Well, that's a perfect play in this kind of rivalry game. Submarines him, sends him up into the air. Ball almost came out. Hawkins on the move again, again when he laterally and just flips the ball into the bench. Yeah, he, Unable to get around the corner. A lot of plays have looked like that so far. Yeah. What they're trying to do for him is give him easy, quick reads to get the ball out of his hands. He's looking at, at this stage of his career, he's looking at primary, meaning his primary receiver in his read. And if he's not open, a veteran quarterback looks for his second or third option. A lot of times young quarterbacks he looks at his first option it's not there he relies on his feet that's exactly what Texas wants Sooners one of four on third needs six here Hawkins from the pocket in traffic he'll be brought down big Baron Sorrell got him part of that imposing athletic and nasty Texas front uh, there's a lot of pressure. It was tough. He saw Chuck slipped out of that backfield and was all alone. He goes down on a, on a rail route. Nobody sees him or picks him up. But like I said, it's primary, and then he starts to get out. There's the back sliding out of the backfield. But once he comes off primary, his eyes go down, he's in trouble. And Texas does a really good job of squeezing the pocket with Sorrell. Instead of getting upfield and giving him the potential to step up and out, they just squeezed him, make him play from that pocket. Great job there on third down. Well, Zinga tries to pin Texas back again. It's a short punt. No fair catch made. Silas Bolden on the run. I think he caught the Sooner coverage team off guard. Gets the ball out across the 35 as a short punt and a 10-yard return. The emotions over the years of the Red River Rivalry. Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper will be here to Texas State Fairgrounds today. Playoff starts December 20th. It'll be a heck of a race in the SEC. The Aggies sitting atop the conference at 3 0, idle today. Texas at Texas AM at the end of the season. But not, not to look ahead. Plenty to happen between now and then as Texas takes over here. From the 32, blue, not much right at the line of scrimmage. Not to put everything on this Oklahoma defense, but they did a nice job the way they started against Quinn Ewers and his first few series. You can see one of three, missing some open receivers. Last drive really locked in, seven of eight since that slow start. But with the way Oklahoma is playing offense, it's almost hard to imagine them scoring. <laughs> and this defense has got to give this this Oklahoma offense a short field. There's a lot on them and the special teams today. Ball pitched quickly to Blue on the edge, knocked down. It's hard to imagine Oklahoma scoring. Yeah, yeah. If they have to go the length of the field, if they get a short field, you could see it. But with the receivers they currently have, with a young quarterback who's trying to still rely on his legs more than his arm. They're just not equipped to go 80 yards in 12 plays. They, they need a short field or they need an explosive play on offense or they need a, a, a score by the defense because they can't they can't sustain a drive against Texas today. OU's defense trying to get off the field right here on third and seven. They bring pressure. Ewers 
Buys some time and flips it over the middle again. Very, very high. Isaiah Bond was going across the middle, covered by Billy Bowman, but off target. And here comes the punt team. Yeah, they keep showing pressure and then dropping out of it. They mug both their backers up here and then drop them. They drop this. So they're just trying to affect the offensive line and the quarterback from pre-snap to post-snap and rely on four, which works. Ewers is getting flushed out. You got eight, you got seven guys back in zone coverage with their eyes on him. There's just nobody open on that third down. That's what makes it sting so badly for the Oklahoma side that they were not able to cash in the early field position, the yeah. early takeaway. Yeah. Because they had the situation you think is necessary had to everything put points they on the board and could come up with only three. Yeah. Those first three series, I mean, they, one of them was plus territory, one was right at midfield, one was near their own 40. And, you get three points out of it. Field goal and a missed field goal. So Ian Ratliff, his third punt. This one is better. And trying to make something happen from the 15 yard line is Bowen, and he'll scamper forward. Former five star recruit is safety. And he's knocked down after about an 11 yard return. Flag is out. Wondered with you know Ian Ratliff punting, never punted before. Aggressive approach on the Oklahoma special teams. And you wonder if they'll try to come after and make a play that way. Wonder if they'll begin to use some some trickery. Gadget yep. plays have had a big role in this series over the years, especially yep. when the offense has had trouble making there things is no happen. Foul for illegal formation. First down. While you wonder about that, I wonder about is Jackson Arnold at some point ever get asked to come back? He was benched in the Tennessee game, and Hawkins has taken over since then. And I'm not saying Hawkins isn't capable, but I'm just wondering if if they continue to struggle. He's been sacked three times. He's two of five for eight yards when they're throwing inside the pocket. So if, if they continue to struggle like that, I'm just curious if they might consider at some point maybe going back to Jackson Arnold, who was a starter, obviously, at the beginning of the year. And using the formation with a lot of folks in the backfield quite frequently today. Sharp shifts out, but there are still two backs flanking Hawkins. And they hand the football coming to the right to Barnes, and Javante Barnes picks up a nice chunk of yardage. Laura, what do you have? Well, Chris, the message down here to Hawkins Jr. is exactly what Kirk has been saying. Hey, if you get in trouble, just throw the ball away or even hand it to one of the backs like we just saw there. Also, Jackson Arnold incredibly engaged over here if he does need to go back in. Yeah, he was uh, at a glazed look. We were there in Norman. The, the loss against Tennessee had three. Offense, number 10. And Five set the Sooners penalty. back. Had the three Second turnovers. Down. But since then, since losing his job to a true freshman, he says stayed yes, active. Yeah, yeah. Everybody I talked with uh, this week on the OU side, Venables, the OC, everybody said, because I was wondering in today's era, sometimes high five-star quarterbacks, they lose their job. There's always a rule, oh, boy, is he going to leave kind of guy? Every, it's been the opposite from everything I've heard. He's been engaged, locked in, and preparing as if he was a starter, which you like to hear. Take it to Barnes. Hawkins trying to get the edge this time. Runs through a tackle and spins up near the 40, and they will move the six with the quarterback's legs before Gilbo got him down. Yeah, I mean, again, his legs are his strength, and he, he's not just a quick quarterback. He's got some power to pull out of there. They continue with this two-back look. Tachuk, hammer behind the line of scrimmage. Instant penetration and a loss on the play. That was Leonie LeFau. Well, here's the thing. When you show that two-back look, you start to realize these safeties and backers start to anticipate with 27 on the right, they're going to hand it to two. So let's let's kind of start to cheat that way just in case you start to get a guy, a couple extra guys up near the line of scrimmage. Good job of seeing that and attacking downhill. Hawkins fires across the middle into traffic. That was a nice ball. And the catch made by Jake Roberts, the reliable tight end. Picks up 12 yards. And be third in about three now. Surprise, I think Derek Williams, the safety, who kind of came up, made the tackle, and smacked the ground. He, they're giving these OU receivers a little bit too much depth. A lot of these throws are coming out quick from Hawkins. They want to try to squeeze that, that, that ground away, that space away on that back edge of the defense in these passing situations. Make him go over top of you. 
Barnes makes a cut, slips as he made the cut, and that was costly. He'll be stopped behind the line, loses a yard, and now it's fourth down and about four at the 46. Yeah, eight guys up near the line of scrimmage. Everybody up to stop the running game, put the ball in the hands of this quarterback in the passing game, make that passing game beat you. Good job of over just having too many bodies up front. It was a promising start to the drive, moved the sticks, got out near midfield, but could not convert on third and three, and Elzinga will send it away again. Silas Bolden comes over and he's going to field it again. No fair catch again for the re returner who slung out of bounds at the 16 yard line. Texas fans wanted to flag Owen Heineke on the stop. Ready for the athletic trivia question, Kirk? Oh, yeah. Last team to win a national championship with multiple QBs that season. Well, okay, Ohio State comes to mind that 2014. Yeah, of course. It's happened. But I'm wondering if you mean like it's two guys rotating all the way through. You know, the way Tommy Frazier to and yeah. Brooks Bollinger did. Yeah. I mean, that kind of thing. Or it's that in that Ohio State's case, it was through injuries. Sure. To Braxton Miller, then JT Barrett, and then Cardell Jones finished it up. There's been quite a few, I think. Texas from the 16 here. Wisner. Has the edge and is knocked down across the 22 pick at about five. Yeah, we didn't have to go back very far. I was going to wait a second. JT Daniels began the season, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the man that took over. So it was just three years ago for Georgia. That counts. There's a whole bunch of teams. Yeah. Won yeah. championships with multiple starting quarterbacks. Yeah. So one guy going out hurt. That's been went all the way to the championship game. People calling for <laughs> Daniels to come back. <laughs> Finally lifted the trophy. Like, is this enough? Did I do it? In year two, he was secure. Yeah. Yours again. Look downfield. Checks it down. And DeAndre Moore brought down right there. It's actually a short loss on that play. Well, nice job by this defense. That's Eli Bowen that time, the brother of Peyton Bowen, out there again. You get out there in space. You got to be able to make a play. 23 is out there in the right flat. Okay, can you make that play? Great job there. Closes the ground, wraps him up. That was beautiful. Longhorns need six. Oklahoma can get the football back with a chance to perhaps threaten before halftime. They walk up some defenders and bring pressure. Ball is out quickly. The catch is made by Ryan Wingo. Look out. This freshman can fly. Running through some tackles. Stiff arm and finally dragged down in Oklahoma territory after a 43-yard gain. What a future and a present Ryan Wingo has. No doubt about that. Sark says that his guy could be as good as any of these freshman receivers you see all over the country. A late blitz here. Good job. Yours head's already out there. He sees that threat right away, knows he's got to get the ball out in a hurry. Perfectly read and good job of getting it out of his hands. Weisner makes a cut. Weisner loses the football, bounces into the end mode to scramble for it. Trying to make the recovery is Silas Bolden, and he does for a Texas touchdown. Wacky stuff at Red River. Always have to expect it. <laughs> wow. I, you know, Robert Spears Jennings caught up to him from the right, and it looks like he may have knocked that ball out. It looked, boy, that thing just opened up. He gets around that edge. Look at the patience as a back and then make a guy miss. Now he's off to the races and off to his right. Three catches up to him. And the ball just gets, now it's a matter. He's going to roll out of the end zone and be a touchback Oklahoma ball. But instead, Texas is able to secure it there with Silas Bolden. Silas Bolden was the top receiver on Oregon State a year ago. Transfers here. They're waiting for him to make a breakout play. This is not what they expected, recovering a fumble from the touchdown. Well, he's inbounds there. The progressive pylon cam showing you there the shot before. There In it Oklahoma, is. Oklahoma, that, that stings. You, you need some breaks oh. when you're playing the number one team. Already behind, they create the turnover. Great hustle, as you said, by Spears Jennings. But Bolden just there to save the day for Texas.
It's another long march with the Longhorns. A weird ending to it. Of course, the big play to Wingo. He covered 84 yards in four plays, less than two minutes, and the lead is now 11. It's amazing where Bolden came from to recover this fumble, Chris. He's in the backfield making a block. That is an all-out hustle play just in case. He had no business being there. And for some reason, he decided, watch him. He's on the, down here at the bottom. Watch what he does here. He's going to try to secure a block. He's blocking, he's blocking, he's blocking. Now he's like, he could stop. Why, why keep running? He decides, oh, you never know. I'm going to go down there. And the ball pops out. And look who's there to jump on top of it. He was going down there to celebrate. Let's I think he honest. was. Okay. I'm going to give him credit for hustling just in case. That was awesome. Receivers do so many things that don't involve catching the football and running with it. It's the blocks. It's the yeah. hustle plays. And, man. And that was a I'll huge tell you, the, one for In Tyler's the film ball. room, Sark will make a huge deal. Out of that that's the difference between a touchdown and going up 14-3 and OU's ball on a touchback Oklahoma had a chance to get off the field on defense early in that drive couldn't do it and then they give up the explosive play and there's a big difference between these two football teams in that category Texas has been able to create those explosive plays despite all the new receivers and the new running backs Oklahoma has been starving for plays just like that and now they'll Apparently going to have to try to create one, conjure one to turn this around. Let's check in with Kevin Nagani for the first time this afternoon. Chris, uh, State Farm, halftime report with Dan and Booger coming your way. Uh, Silas Bolton, wild day so far in Dallas, wild touchdown. How does that impact Oklahoma? Well, I actually think this helps Oklahoma because it's going to force them to open his offense up. You, you're not going to beat Texas in a little slug flight. Open the offense up. It feels like a massive drive for Oklahoma's offense. Bama survives right now. Penn State in serious trouble in Southern California. Back to you. See you guys soon. 221 before halftime. Hawkins took a peek and now just takes off and runs it right up the middle and picks up about 10. Yeah, yeah. Opening up, guys are talking about opening up this offense with the receivers that they have and the quarterback who's looking at one receiver and then running. Quarterback draw is probably their version of opening it up. I mean, if they're going to make a big play, the Texas defender is going to have to fall down or he's going to have to run a quarterback draw or scramble and create. I don't see them making a big play with anybody else right now. It was a desperation heave to J.J. Hester against Auburn that saved the day. Tough for the Eventful afternoon and an also cool night in the SEC. Jackson Dart and the Rebels visit Tiger Stadium, Death Valley at night over on ESPN. Travis Hunter and the Buffaloes hosting Kansas State in primetime on ESPN. Calling a 3.30 game. We get to be able to watch some of these games do. tonight. Some good ones for them. So the quarterback drop produces a first down. OU from the 35 now. True freshman Taylor Tatum is in the backfield. Late pressure. Hawkins flushed, escapes, went in for his life. They ripped the football out. Anthony Hill attacked the football, and Texas has a takeaway in Oklahoma territory. Look like Savea recovered it. Now, th this is a good job of disguising the blitz here to the very end and then bringing it, walking it up off the edges. He said Hill is able to knock that out. Like Bunch Broughton, of, yeah, Broughton is able to get on top of that. And now they get plus territory. This is the danger of having a quarterback who's incredibly athletic, very gifted, but wants to rely on his feet a lot. And that's the, probably their best weapon right now with all the injuries that they've sustained. So you understand what he's trying to do. He's just trying to make a play. And Anthony Hill is able to rip that ball out and Texas trying to get another one. OU gets the ball to start the second half. OU wants to get one more here before the half ends. How good is Anthony Hill? Impact player as a freshman a year ago. Grew up going to the State Fair every year with his family. Living the dream here. Texas trying to stretch the lead and cash in. Look out. Wisner's loose. Matravion Wisner to the end zone. And Texas in a one-play drive builds the lead. 43 yards.
Wow. Nightmare second quarter for Oklahoma. Yeah, the, the Oklahoma defense is obviously a strength of theirs. And they just, the wear and tear of this half and lack of productivity from their own offense, and then a big turnover. It's a sudden change, and OU not really ready emotionally for that. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. If you, if you go back and look at his play, Robert Spears Jennings, who's a great player, he's right here coming out onto the field, right? Trying to get the call, trying to see what's going on. So this is a sudden change. Oklahoma's trying to get lined up. Now just keep an eye on that player. Right there. Opportunity to get that play on the ground right here for about an eight or 10 yard gain, misses the tackle. And then he's off to the races. So comes on the field a little bit late. Not real sure what the call is. Ball snapped. He's trying to make a tackle. Misses that tackle. And then there's the speed in that backfield with Wisner. The sophomore takes it to the house. They're up 21-3. Kirk, what a devastating sequence for Oklahoma. They force a fumble. Then Bolden sprints down the field, recovers it for a touchdown. A couple plays later, Hawkins puts it on the ground. And then Wisner's loose. And... It's a three touchdown second quarter for Texas. So what's the worst thing that could happen to you as an offense when you down to your sixth and seventh and eighth receiver? You got an offensive line that's been banged up and you got a true freshman quarterback getting down 21 to three. You know, now, now you're in catch up mode and now you're in obvious passing situations and now it's tougher on the line and tougher on the quarterback. These games are typically close. Nine of the last 11 decided by one score. The aberration was two years ago when Texas hammered them 49 yeah. nothing. Beginning to feel a little bit like there's a potential for that today. Yeah, it does feel like that, unfortunately, for OU. And it's it's been about Oklahoma, you know, not just not being able to have enough weapons to try to attack this athletic Texas defense. It's been a lot of the quarterback trying to make plays. Now he comes off his primary, he wants to be able to run, he's very good at it. But when that's your main weapon, you don't have a lot of other weapons. That defense is zoned in on stopping him. It's coverage where it counts, presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Oklahoma goes to Tatum, who spins free and dives across the 35. He lost the ball. A scramble for it. No signal yet. Still waiting for a signal from this officiating crew, some pushing and shoving. Sooners think they got it back. Derek Williams knocked the ball loose. See if uh, Steve Marlowe can get the mic turned on and provide some clarity here. I think I think he had to be called down on the or field. Texas the ball, ball carrier down yeah. and losing possession. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, it's either he's dead because there were four Texas guys that dove for the football. He's that ball's either out. That ball's out. It's out yeah, and it's out. That's, and it's a quick recovery for Texas right after the fumble. Helmet on the football by Williams and the true freshman. Lost that one. Seen consecutive fumbles now by true freshman for Oklahoma and Texas. Wow. Minute 32. A couple timeouts if they need him to add to an 18 point lead before the break. Yeah, that's easily a Texas recovery if it was ruled a fumble, and it is. I, I think they'll overturn it. Texas, Texas had 13 yards of offense in the first quarter. In this second quarter, they've had 200 yards of offense. I said they woke up. <laughs> yeah. They did. It was that one pass that got yours going. That ball that was ruled just in bounds. DeAndre Moore made the downfield grab. And that got the drive ignited and it's been the ball carrier did fumble the ball. It was recovered by Texas. First down at the 38 yard line. And that one play really sparked it, and now it's been a, a burnt orange avalanche since then. And if you're Brent Venables in this defense, you've seen your guys have a couple mental lapses. They've missed some tackles today. They need to bow up right now and, and make something happen. It would be hard to imagine coming from 25 points down to the break if Texas yeah. is able to score again. Holly? Well, guys, bad news for Texas. Isaiah Bond, their best receiver, 20 receptions, averaging 18.2 yards per carry, has been taken to the locker room. Early in the game, I saw him tweak something. He came over, slammed his helmet on the sideline. They took him into the injury tent for a while. He's been nursing it, but they have finally just taken him back off the field. I'll update you when I know more. 
Here's the play Holly as he was kind of spun down landed awkwardly. Keep an eye on his status of course Texas has the big game against Georgia next week. This is a backward pass. Golden looking to throw it downfield, oh. and he looked very much like a receiver throwing a football because he had a man open. Wingo was running free. Oh, here. Man. As soon as he threw it, he put his head in the air, almost like he was embarrassed. <laughs> and you know how many times you practice that, and you just hope coach will call it. Goes in motion, lateral right there. He can throw this ball. Oh, you bites on it. Oh, he no. just couldn't get it. He falls. He's falling backwards. I don't think he's got a good handle on that. He just heaves it. That was a touchdown they missed there. Talked about tape study. There's been a lot of good moments that'll be laughed at. Blue takes off and bursts forward. Another first down at about the 25. Got 13 more. Starting to crease this defense. Like I said, sometimes when your own offense isn't doing anything, it, it can affect your defenses, their effort, their mental, how sharp they're playing, their tackling. Blue again. Knocked down to the 19. You, you knew Sarkeesian only a matter of time before he was going to dial up some kind of a gadget. Uh, he, he went for the dagger right there. He did. Didn't quite get it executed. And it still has a minute with two timeouts remaining. Back to back zone plays. This back has shown really good vision. First one he cut back. That time he went outside on it. Final minute. They fake it to blue. Pitch it on the edge. And that's DeAndre Moore who's going to be brought down at the 20. It'll be third down. Both sides subbing here before this play. Silas Bolden's in the backfield, and Ewers looks for him. Catch made, and the man who recovered the fumble for the touchdown brought down by Eli Bowen short of the marker. It's fourth down, clock running with 36 seconds to go. They're right in front of the, the Texas fans at this part of the stadium, and right away they, the fans want to go for, the, go for that touchdown. Right? Yeah, of course. He's going to call a timeout here. Interesting to see what he decides to do. We have seen it before when the team comes in, underdog for a reason, shorthanded with injuries, and gets some breaks early and makes some of their own breaks. And they've got an advantage in field position momentum, but they don't take advantage of those breaks. You just know it's a matter of time before Texas would wake up and begin to flex, and that's what we've seen here. Yeah, and, and like Quinn Ewers started really slow. That was a little bit of his story early. That's a forgotten, forgotten thought at this point. He made a nice throw and a scramble to the right and to Wingo, and from that point on, it's been all Texas and just the ability to make plays on really both sides of the ball. I'm going to bring you back to your question earlier. Do you go back to Jackson Arnold, a superior I, thrower of the football? Remember, he's a five-star recruit. Do you go back to him in the second half? I think you have to consider that. I, I, I just, if nothing else, to try to create a spark. It's nothing against Michael Hawkins. Got a great future. He's got a great. We saw that in the Tennessee game. His toughness that he plays with. Right now, he's still in the, in the developmental process. You know, it's tough to ask a freshman with a banged-up offensive line and with a lot of young receivers to, to try to play in this kind of game. I mean, if it could have stayed at 10-7, 13, you know, one possession game. That's his kind of game. You dig yourself a hole like this, and it's uh, it, you're trying to find a quarterback that can help you throw the football. Texas trying to make it a deeper hole. They're going for it here. Need a full yard on fourth. Blue and Jarrett Gibson. The freshman in the backfield. Pitch it. Blue. Flag comes in right at the point of attack. That's Gun, yeah, Gunner, typical holding zone there. Gunner Helm, the tight end out there on the on the edge. So that'll back him up, take away what would have been a first down run, and you'd think the Sarkeesian would holding. send the field goal team out. this number 85. Ten yard penalty. Fourth down. Thought a good lip read. He said it's a terrible call. He nah. just horrible. Disagree. He said that's horrible. You tell me if it's horrible. It's right here. He brings him into his body and then just kind of pulls him down. It's a two-point wrestling takedown. So, Burt Auburn instead comes on from 44 yards. Senior from Flower Mound tries to make it. A 21 point margin at the break. And it's right, but a whistle before the kick. Not a very good looking kick. 
He was struggling in warm-ups down there. It's a, it's a gusty the wind. Timeout, Oklahoma. 30-second timeout. Well, he took a timeout to freeze the kicker, and he's going to get a mulligan there. That was not well struck. Nunn made a meal out of the slight contact after the miss. Well, he saw it going right, so he decided to take a dive there. Sark's telling him, hey, man, they called a timeout. You get another one. I don't know if Sark's qualified to give kicking advice. He, my, Mike Black is. He's to my left, the spotter, former Boise State kicker and arena kicker. Says you got to drive it. You can't pop the ball. You got to drive it into that wind. Yeah, absolutely. Come on, for whatever. It was not like. driven. That no, no. Missed it. They make this. They make this field goal. It's 17 points in the last 221 of this half. Now this one he wants to hit like you're, the way you hit your driver, really just like, low. Skull it. <laughs> hit it off the tee low. box marker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both of us awful. Given a second chance and see if Auburn can convert this time. Much better, but did it hold on? It did not miss that one wide left. So even with the mulligan, missed the fairway. So our spotter and former kicker says drive it. This time he says he opened his hips and he pulled it. We need a Mike Black cam so we can show you him pantomiming what the kicker's doing. <laughs> well. Oh, you does get the ball to start the second half. And who will be the quarterback? That will be a conversation Oklahoma fans around the country are perhaps having as much as they appreciate what Michael Hawkins has brought to this team. Again, you can't put it all on him. No, no, no. Venables said that he felt that this pressure would bring out the best, that he would be able to meet the moment. There hasn't been enough around him, though. No. He doesn't have a big no, toolbox Michael, today, does no, he, to work no. with? No, like we said, it's, it's a tough thing for a guy that's still developing as a guy that can see that open up he's just still first guy and wants to take off and, and run that's tough to do it's his defense Ollie's with Steve Sarkeesian well coach Sarkeesian you said the number one goal of this game is to identify what this Brent Venables defense is doing and then attack it what have you found on the last few drives well we got the running game going we're getting a lot of split safety a lot of three safety looks we got to run the ball and take advantage of stuff with the light box and we're doing that Quinn yours took a minute to settle in how has he gotten more comfortable how did you help him well we're staying out of third longs, first of all. He missed a couple throws early. But I think he's in, in a pretty good groove now. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Flores with Brent Venables. All right, Coach, you get the ball to start the second half. How do you get more offense going? Yeah, I'm just going to start over. You know, again, we've got to take care of the football. we got to go in. We're going to learn how to tackle. We'll get those two things cleaned up see if we can make it a ball game. You stick with Michael Hawkins, Jr. at quarterback? Yeah, he's done, he's, he's done okay. All right, thanks, Coach. Chris. Laura, thank you. Turnovers and tackling. Among the problems that Venable's team has, 107 yards of total offense. Texas, after a scoreless start to this game, 21 points in the second quarter. Captain Report coming up right after these messages. You're watching the SEC. Something. Venable's assessment was that Hawkins had played okay and he was going to stick with him. Stone's boot to Sam Franklin. He takes it from the three. Running sideways, trying to get the corner and cannot. Takes a big shot right at the 20 yard line. Here's that scoring flurry from Texas. They finally got a drive going 75 yards, spread the ball around, and Gunnar Helm made the touchdown catch. Yeah, what a call there by Sark on third down. Goes to the tight end on the backside after rolling the quarterback to the right. This is a great hustle play right here by 11. Silas Bolton secures that touchdown after a fumble. This is what Chris is talking about late in that first half. The turnovers, it was like an avalanche. And OU's defense, maybe the wear and tear, emotional wear and tear, led to that quick score for the uh, for the Texas offense after that sudden change. Start over is what Brett Venable said, Kirk. He'd like to, but they face a huge deficit here. That would indicate that you got to find a spark. Who who can make a play? Is it J.J. Hester who got downfield on Auburn in that comeback you talked about? Can somebody else step up? When the, and the problem is that Sark's defense right now, they're just sitting back. They're not giving up those those quick easy scores. They want to just keep everything in front of the Texas defense and make OU methodically move the football down the field. Don't give up any easy ones. 
make this quarterback play consistently as a true freshman. Got a couple guys down. Yeah, Sam Franklin, the returner, took a, took a shot into the medical tent for Oklahoma. And um, for Texas, Derek Williams, the safety involved in that special teams play being looked at. Not a high snap count game. It's been played actually pretty methodically. Texas running 32 plays in the first half. Oklahoma averaging barely three yards a play. Just yeah. 107 total offense. Yeah. As Williams has helped off. Yeah, he's been hurt. He's just getting a chance to come back. Right leg looks like the issue of concern. So what can OU do to create a spark? What can Hawkins do? He's been harassed. He's been chased down. A couple of sacks by the Longhorns in the first half. Javante Barnes tries to get the edge. Texas showed pressure up the middle, and that's a nice run around the left side for first down yardage. Yeah, they, the yep, they blitzed Anthony Hill up the middle, able to get to the edge, get to the outside, away from that interior pressure. They've had some success running the football out there with Barnes and occasionally the quarterback getting out there with Hawkins. Check to the sidelines. See Texas playing back here, two safeties. And don't want to give up anything through the air. Another run off the left side. Barnes, it'll stutter step, and it's a positive game on first down. Laura? Well, Chris, we wondered about the decision to stick with Michael Hawkins Jr., but this Oklahoma team really believes in him. Their defensive leader, Danny Stutzman, going up to him right before this drive, reminding him of that. We believe in you. They actually trust his quiet confidence a lot. We'll see if they can score here, guys. Imperative for Oklahoma. He's a very calm guy, and you're right, Laura, but teammates kind of react to that in a magnetic way but he's going to have to do it with his his play not his demeanor pitch on the edge Barnes that time tracked down for a short loss it'll be third down Trey Moore in the stop and Anthony Hill yep good job by Anthony Hill right here being able to get around the blocks trying to get up to him that's 87 Jake Roberts but because his ability to read and diagnose that play quickly Kind of a slow developing speed option. Even the man he pitched off there, Trey Moore, he usually be eliminated in the option, but he's able to work down the line himself. That was just a too slow of a play. Would you say a little urgency here for the Sooners to keep this initial drive of the third quarter going? Hawkins straight back, pressure, cannot escape, knocked down at the line of scrimmage, and that's LeFau again. Fourth down. But they have their eyes on nine. There's no way they're going to let him take off and, and pick up a first down. They're showing pressure here. He'll drop, and he's just keying on nine. If he takes off, that's his job to try to bring him down. The pressure gets in from behind, and eventually it is cleaned up there by Leifau. Smart, very instinctive linebacker. A great football tradition in Hawaii. He's a sophomore. It's a... Uh, Good looking linebacker core. Bolden this time does wave a fair catch. Do not want to make a mistake as a returner when your team is up 18. Holly, what do you have? Well, guys, Quinn Ewers has settled in nicely to this ball game despite that oblique strain injury. It's such a rare injury. It's actually something that we see in baseball pitchers and volleyball players. Actually, David Carr in the NFL has a similar injury. They reached out to Texas this week to find out how they're treating him, how they're treating Quinn Ewers because he has looked good. A lot of different techniques, but also the defense trying to make a big stand right here. They've been terrific against this Oklahoma stand so far. Pete Kwiatkowski told us that they'd love to get out after the quarterback and pressure. No, they sure do. And they've done a good job of it today. From the 15. Two back look. It's Ryan Niblett, the receiver who is joining Weisner in the backfield. He goes on the left side for about a yard. Sark uh, coming off the field was mentioning to Holly that listen they, they're sitting back on us they don't want to give our receivers a chance one on one they, they're playing with a lot of times three safeties so Sark said we've had to be patient run the football 
Not to mention you got an 18 point lead, but if OU continues to sit back, it's either quick throws or running the ball. Ewers launches and again it's Gunnar Helm wide open. The tight end leaked down on the backside. First down across the 40. I think Robert Spears Jennings just gets lost in coverage. Watch him right here. A little bit of motion. He's got him. He thinks he's got him, and then he loses him. Eyes in the backfield. I don't know if it was the motion that caught his eyes or whatever it was, but Ewers was quick to see that Helm, who's one of his go-to targets, just left free in man coverage that time by, by Spears Jennings. You're right. He definitely is one of the go-to. They have a good connection, a lot of trust between the quarterback and the tight end. 26 yard gain now Weisner cuts it back and Quintravian Weisner the teammates call him Trey mom says no it's called Quintravian and we're going to go with her picked up eight more yeah it, the, you know the story of these running backs when you lose CJ Baxter in camp and you you lose Christian Clark and blue is going to be part of that but boy they have shown incredible depth at that position with blue and Weisner and even the freshman Gibson getting some chances remember what he did in the in the Michigan game in Ann Arbor it's over 100 yards now for Weisner. Ewers back pedaling, being chased. Not very far to go for a first down. He slides down in Oklahoma territory. Gunnar Helm threw a block for him. There's some tempers flaring. I guess the Texas big fellas thought they got too close to the quarterback. He was giving himself up there. There's no flag yet. Oh, that might happen. There goes a flag. Oh, you frustrated. This defense is championship caliber defense. I mean, it is a really good defense. They just don't have an offense with all the injuries. To, and I think some of the frustration showing with OU. It's big Dominic Williams. Very powerful nose tackle involved over there. I didn't see anything when yours went down in the play that would draw a penalty or, or, or spark Hard feelings, but it was Weisner who got shoved hard to the ground at the end of the play. Yeah, Weisner went down after getting shoved. And that's what really escalated both sides. There are two fouls on the play. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 52, defense, his first of the game. Also, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 65, offense. Also, his first, excuse me, 56 for the offense. Fouls canceled. Second down. So they got two Williams, Dominic for Oklahoma, Cameron for Texas. Not related. No, and I think right as you started to talk about it, that's that's where it started. Boy, Helm got away with a hold there on Kip Lewis. And I think they were just some of the Texas players a little bit frustrated. This is where you saw 52 make the shove there. Dominic Williams reaction there by 56. That was the other penalty. He's the guy that fell on yours. It didn't look to be flag worthy at that point. No, no. I think when he when he shoved Weiser into the ground, oh, that's, this what, was, yeah. that's what brought it. And then Williams responded to it. So Texas off that scramble. First down at the Oklahoma 45, trying to make this an even huger mountain to climb for Oklahoma. You're Oklahoma and you want to sit back and prevent big plays. I understand that, except it allows Texas to go on these longer drives, churn even more clock. You're going to get fewer and fewer possessions. Blue off the left side picks up a few. Well, the fear is if you if you do bring safeties down and you, you put a safety in the middle of the field and you, you give them that one high look, yours has such confidence in his receivers, he'll he'll take a shot. And they're just kind of baiting this defense to eventually get them down. End around here. This is Wingo. Ryan Wingo made a play like this against Michigan. You give him any space, and you better buckle up. Peyton Bowen got him down, saved the touchdown, but he gained 25. 6 2 2 10, true freshman out of St. Louis. Sark tells us he could be, you know, he says, you know, Jeremiah Smith at Ohio State is a great receiver. Ryan Williams, a great receiver at Alabama. He said soon people are going to be talking about Ryan Wingo in the same fashion. They fake the pitch. Ewers on the move. 
avoids pressure and fires into the end zone incomplete tried to find helm who was well covered yeah 22.5 per catch for wingo coming into this game electric 75 yard touchdown against the road runners of utsa and i think you're right they spread the ball around if they had featured him if they were short on yeah. receivers you yeah. might have ryan williams like stats yeah i mean when you when you start to prepare for him you look at all of these receivers it's bond and wingo and golden and bolton and deandre moore jonte cook it they don't just isolate him and, and maybe as the season goes on they'll start to do more and more of that with that kind of cushion up top okay they're going to take it away Blue cuts it back. Again, Holly reporting that Isaiah Bond has left the game. Don't know if he'll return. So one of the key components of that receiving core is out, but still an enormous amount of talent. One thing that stands out when you're watching them play, when they get into a lead like this and a team knows they want to wear them down and run the ball, you still can't stop them. That's a tip of the cap to the offensive line and the execution up front. Not Beautiful execution that time. They faked it to Blue. Moore was open on the edge. Ewers missed him. And now it's fourth down again. Yeah, it's a run pass option. And if he feels any kind of pressure at all, he's reading this guy right here. Watch his head. Look over here. Sees that. Got it. And he just misfires. But an easy first down is the right read. Maybe just hurried it. Sarkeesian passing on the field goal attempt this time. You need to get to the eight. Fake it to Blue, Ewers, end zone, and he overthrew it. So a turnover on downs. Wingo was behind a couple of suitors. That would have been a tricky pitch and catch. Yeah, he's trying to kind of give a, a, a hesitation move and then go by Des Malone. He's way out to the right, a little bit of an inside, and then tries to work around him, but hands on him, slowed him down, didn't allow him to get to his spot, and OU prevents the touchdown. He's kind of beefed up. He's about 65 pounds a day. So like Sarkeesian's beefing up good. the offensive line to get ready for the SEC. Yeah, Bebo. even Bebo's, Bebo's bulking up. up. Yeah. Man, I wish Ben would have come this week. I would have loved to send him down there to say hello. Hawkins from the pocket. Pump fake, and he'll be knocked down hard. Nobody open. And eventually the pass rush closed in. That's Ethan Burke who knocked him down. Yeah, they're zeroing in, keeping their safeties back, not willing to give up anything downfield, and then they can turn up some pressure, able to bring that the nickel that time. I thought he might throw that one away again outside of the pocket, but instead, like you say, a pump fake, another loss of yardage. It was an aggressive pump fake. He had to beat his left hand out there to keep the ball in possession there. Second and 14. Barnes from the goal line muscles for a short gain Holly well, speaking of beef this is something intentional that Steve Sarkeesian has done since he came to Texas he understood from his time at Alabama that the line of scrimmage is everything to win a national championship so it's been subtle but it does matter look at the offensive line on average they are 10 pounds heavier and the defensive line you can see the changes there they are slowly but surely investing in big men is what Steve Sarkeesian says and they're getting that push along the line they definitely looked the part. Impressive team coming off the bus. Impressive team on the field. Third and 14. Pass rush. Flushes Hawkins again. Who scans and just throws it away. Nobody home. And Trey Moore came after him. And here comes the punt team. Well, the, his intended receiver, Bauer Sharp, thought he was scrambling. He started to block. There, there's no one to throw the football to. I mean, their, their last seven drives, punt, punt, fumble, fumble, punt, punt. Why they're 18 points down. And you go back to Texas going for it, what's the downside? If you don't get it, you're putting this OU offense and struggling at their own 10-yard line. They'll zing it and boot it away again. Really no consequences. You get the ball right back. There are three returners back. Silas Bolden standing at the 45. Lefty gets it away and drives him backwards. Good punt. Bolden makes the grab at about the 30. Now tries to get the edge. Is retreating here. And will finally turn the corner. 
and is grabbed out of bounds at about the 32 yard line. A 64 yard punt by Alzinga. Thank you by Allstate. You're in good hands. Try to cover from all angles. The T-38s are part of the flyover before the game. And they were. Let's go inside the cockpit, Kirk. You can get inside one of these things. I in have. The back seat, in the back I, seat. I threw up the entire trip. <laughs> Hour 45. Fellas from Shepherd Air Force Base up in Wichita Falls being honored before the game. That was cool. Some Texas fans and some not Texas fans. <laughs> Longhorns from the 32 midway through this third quarter. Uneventful third quarter so far. Wisner into heavy traffic. Not much there. And Turkesian can tend to grind things out if he has to here. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, this game is in is in his hands. Like I said, this is what Texas knowing that, that OU has these difficulties right now at this stage of where they are with their injuries. That, their whole goal is if they could build a lead and get them into catch-up mode, into obvious passing situations, then they could just sit on the ball, work the clock, high percentage throws. There's a high percentage check down to Wisner, who's slammed down a couple yards short of the marker by Bowen. So third down and about four. Start to look at Texas from a bigger picture standpoint of who they are. They're going to get an opportunity next week at home against Georgia. But this offense with the offensive line, the new weapons that they've developed on the outside, the nice tight end, Ewers experience, and Wisner and Blue in that backfield. Man, there's a lot to like. A lot to love about the defense, by the way. Which yeah. came in averaging just seven points a game allowed. Yep. Under four yards per play. Beating those marks so far as Ewers has plenty of time. Fires across the middle to Golden. Matthew Golden. And that throw downfield over the middle was accurate. Picked up 23. You, know, you have a mesh underneath. They're expecting man. So you get this look and this look in case it's man. And then you get the backside dig route. See underneath? Not there. It opens up perfectly for that throw right behind. Beautiful opening throwing lane for him. After tempo, Wisner takes off and a first down run for about five. Yeah, he, you know, you, you come into this game thinking Blue might be the featured guy, and his game has gone on more and more. Wisner's gotten a hot hand. He's averaging 12 yards a carry, up and over 100 yards. He looks fresh. He looks really good. 200 pounder. Breakout game for him, best game of his career. He do 100 yards plus rushing in the Red River game. That constitutes a breakout for the sophomore. He feed it to him again, bust it outside. Weisner oh, lowers his shoulder and he banged into Kobe McKenzie. And it's another first down. Holly? Well, you see the run game starting to heat up. Time for the passer to operate. This offensive line of Texas is gelling and coming together at a perfect moment. Remember, their center, Jake Major, last year got injured early in this game, and things went south. Good to see him healthy out there running things. Huge turning point last year early when he left the game. Majors has a PhD in the offensive scheme. Yeah, he certainly he does. does. Yeah. Kirk Flood summed it up when he told her, Kyle Flood summed it up when he said he's basically a coach on the field, 48 career stars, the leader, makes as many calls as, as uh, Quinn Ewers. You know, he and Quinn Ewers work together when it comes to recognizing fronts, looking for that Mike linebacker, just making sure everybody's on the same page. Some things go overlooked by fans. Having a veteran center for any offense is big. It certainly didn't hurt Arch Manning when he stepped in to fill in for Ewers, that steady hand, making his 47th start today. Jaden Blue on the edge, explodes around the corner, shoved out of bounds. DeAndre Moore made a block. Bowen got him down, but an 11-yard gain. To me, I think you just learn a lot about a personality of a team by how the receivers block. And this Texas team is an unselfish group. I mean, they, they look like they take as much pride in blocking as they do catching a football. That time, as you pointed out, DeAndre Moore right out there doing a great job. Left side, not much for Blue as the Longhorns kind of grinding away again, trying to make this an even deeper hole for Oklahoma. 
pretty good penetration this time. Terry's able to get in there. Oklahoma's been rotating a lot of different players. Woolard also in the transfer from Miami of Ohio. Breather for Wiseman. Now he's right back in there. Got the football again. Stiff arm breaks free. Wisner, he's delivering shots in that Oklahoma secondary, not taking them. There's a flag out on the play back near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he went up. Can I, can I walk? Looking or? folks up. <laughs> oh, he dialed him up. They're going to bring this one back. Ten yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, the right guard, DJ Campbell, on a holding call. But man, it's fun to watch him back. Instead of going out of bounds, he stays in bounds and takes that hit on. You said fresh legs. Yeah. Right there. You see him grabbing 90. Again, Woolard. 32 carries through the first five games. So they've been able to spread the ball around. And there's not much wear and tear for any of these Texas backs. And Wisner today just hitting his stride. But the hold moves it back to a second and 22. Pitch on the edge. Catch made by Wingo, and before he can get going, and drag him down at the 23. Even though Sark's becoming more conservative here in his second half with this lead, it, it's still his play design, the eye candy, the pre-snap movement, false keys, does a really good job of putting a lot of pressure on a defense and, and making them really communicate, make sure they adjust, a lot of pre-snap movement. And third and 17, Ewers faces a three-man rush and launches for the end zone, but it's overthrown. Wingo was actually tracking back and made a defensive play to knock the ball away. Bowen was in the neighborhood, and it's fourth down. That's when you have confidence in your guy. When, when the defensive back, you're throwing a go-round, and the defensive back's five yards ahead of the receiver, and you're just like, you know what? He's going to put it up there. Look how far out. Look at Bowen. He's way down. He's like, yeah, I'll give him a shot. What the heck? That's when you know a guy at 6'2 can go up and potentially make a play. No, well, Auburn officially 0 for 1. He missed one attempt. Oklahoma had called timeout, then missed it after that. This from 41, and this is right down the middle. So that'll help get some confidence going forward. And the lead is 21 with 101 to play in the third period. So far, in quarterback for the Bayou Bengals, John McDonough, Greg McElroy, Molly McGrath on the call after we are done. Last time they won, Ole Miss won in there. It was 2008. But they got a veteran quarterback and a scheme. And after losing to Kentucky, little LC urgency and redemption. Hmm. Another interesting day in the SEC. South Carolina very nearly gave Alabama a second consecutive loss. Not the bounce back performance the tide faithful we're looking for. Devin Jordan is going to be knocked down. Decided to bring it out and stop. Hesitated, and hesitated, on. and then brought it out. And now you put this offense just what they need in a hole again. We encourage you, if you're able to, donate to the American Red Cross. Just a devastating one two punch. Hurricane Helene came, and then Hurricane Milton struck. Through Florida, please donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help folks recover. So from the 12-yard line, 88 yards away from the burnt orange colored end zone, Hawkins desperate to make a play to spark this offense. Final minute of the quarter, long sideline throw, and the catch is made by Zion Kearney, knocked out near the marker. First down. Got to play with serious urgency now. You're down three scores. Not a big play offense. You got to find a way to create one. And Texas is not in a cooperative mood. Playing one of the elite defenses in the sport. Play fake. Hawkins down the middle. And the catch is made across there by Bauer Sharp. Pick up about nine. Actually, it's going to be enough for the 10. They spied it right on the strike. There. Yeah, that time they caught him in man coverage. Texas has been playing a lot of zone, but that time man coverage had opened up nicely. He got it out in a hurry, which is what you love to see for this Oklahoma offense. Don't let OU get in there or Texas get in there and affect this quarterback. Quick throws. 
thought they could squeeze in a play here before the end of the quarter, but that's not going to happen. Clock does run out. So just a field goal for Texas in the third quarter. They build the lead 24 3 as they try to end Oklahoma's recent control of the Red River rivalry. Back after this message to the word from your local ABC stations, the SEC on ABC. These Texas students were out there like before kickoff, like two hours, and it was 93 degrees. Taco Bell lived my student section of the year. They're contenders just for that toughness yeah. on a hot day. That's great job by them. There's nothing, you wouldn't get anything to eat out there, would you? Fried Oreos or fried ice cream. You, you're, I'll tell you a story after the play. You're not dabbling. <laughs> play fake. Hawkins, again, looks downfield, didn't find the debate. Texas is just not allowing that. Checks it down. I had a turkey leg. You went. I had a turkey leg. Come on. On, on the SEC Nation show, they handed me one. I didn't know, you wouldn't have liked it. It looked like a rare turkey leg. I don't think. Turkey meat should be had oh, rare. Shot. You got to uh, burn it. Check with me tomorrow. Make sure. Yeah. <laughs> like mine. Everything burnt. Tasted good. It just looked raw. Too pink. Yeah. yeah not my thing. Quarterback run all the way. Hawkins plows forward within about two yards of the marker. Third down coming up. Greatest thing about a young quarterback like Michael Hawkins, just like we saw that night he came in. And Norman against the Tennessee defensive front showed so much toughness. And this this game has not gone the way they had hoped, obviously. But the one thing you can count on with him is kid keeps fighting. Not the biggest guy. He's under 200 pounds, but he is certainly tough. Kind of wiry, strong, obviously explosive, slippery. There's a shovel pass inside of Bauer Sharp to tight end. And Benda makes the tackle. It's just enough to keep this drive going. That's a nice little triple option there with the man in motion. The receiver, or the, the back, Barnes, he could have handed that off or dipped it underneath, which he decides to do. Three man rush. Hawkins is still pressured and flush, and a flag comes out. That stings when Texas rushes three quarterbacks on the move, and you get a, an apparent holding penalty. Yeah, holding on. Hickman, the, the center. Yeah, you're right. Sorrell broke through there. <laughs> Texas defense has not slowed down. There's a lot of pent up frustration. They know that Oklahoma's owned this series, except for the blowout two years ago. Offense number 51. 10 yard penalty, first down. It's the only win for Texas in the last six meetings coming in. So these guys have experienced. More heartbreak than elation in this rivalry, and they are uh, out to fix that today on the Texas side. They will continue to, to come after Hawkins and lay the lumber if possible. Five receivers out, empty backfield. Five man rush again Hawkins pressured and dropped down by Anthony Hill who has had a monster game again against the Sooners just like last year. Well that's such a, such a dangerous thing to, you, you empty it out you've got five offensive linemen and they're rushing five it's one on one and the edges is where they're able to get the pressure on the right side he goes around and on the left side Anthony Hill shows that versatility gets underneath that left tackle with quickness. Ten tackles for Hill, forced to fumble earlier, now has a sack. Look at Hill, he's out here, he drops, he rushes the quarterback, he does everything. Two and a half tackles for loss for the big linebacker and a Denton. Holly? Well, guys, Anthony Hill is known for being a playmaker. He watches extra film so he can do this. His first year as a varsity high schooler, he had 105 tackles. His personal best, 22 tackles in a game. And guess who it was against? Boise State. Ashton Ginty, he knows how to tackle in big moments. 22 tackles, and it was that guy who's one of the hardest to bring down in the country. Kurt? Yeah, Ali, he's got a real sense for the spotlights here. He is a big game linebacker, and he's got another one under his belt today. He's chasing Ooh. down the quarterback again. Did you see the speed of Hill that time? I said there's going to be no let up from this defense. No, no and it's, it's the versatility. Like I said, he, he plays middle linebacker. He'll play out on the edge. He'll walk up and rush the quarterback. He does everything. 
Here he's just, no, he knows there's the threat of him taking off and running. It's maybe OU's best play. Everyone's covered, the quarterback runs. And Oklahoma continuing to go that way. They're going to our left, backwards. Can't, I can't go the other way today. It's been a tough day for the offense. Yeah, you run out of bounds, that's gonna go down as another sack. And Zinga way, way too busy today as the Oklahoma punter. And Silas Bolden is living adventurous. Silas Bolden, can he make the punter miss? He can, down the sidelines. And he's finally knocked out of bounds, way down near the 20 of Oklahoma. He recovered a fumble for a touchdown earlier, almost housed the punt return there. But Chris, great job right when he caught this ball. I wondered if it might be potentially a block in the back. I'm looking at Bill to see what he thinks, but he kind of just used him as a shield to work around him. And it, that play opened up very nicely. Bill, what do you think of that initial? Yeah, he was behind him in chase mode. And yeah. If he's got contact behind him, uh, easy to support a block in the back call there. There wasn't one. Maurer Sharps, the man that hustled down there to save the touchdown but another big play for Bolden Oklahoma thought that they had to win the special teams today make something happen it's been the other way and now Texas begins the drive in the red zone Silas Bolden was a heck of a player we saw him up in Corvallis he was the most reliable receiver in that Beavers team a year ago he comes down here as one of the portal signees and it hadn't really had a breakout game until today, but yeah. it's made a big impact. And, and like, you know, that's what Sark said. At any moment, at any moment, you think he's got the ability to, to get loose, and it's, it's here on special teams. They just come at you in waves. Last year, it was Worthy. It was Mitchell. I mean, you knew who you were dealing with. This year, it's such a different group, very different style from last year, too. Ewers looking to throw on first down. Looks at short, incomplete, and flags come in. That was Desan McCullough in cover trying to break up the play against Wingo. A little too aggressive. Again, McCullough coming back, playing his first football of the season off that foot injury. Still talking about it. Pass interference, defense number one. Spot foul, automatic first down. Always amazes me when you, yeah, he, the left arm, I think, is what they're looking at. Yeah, he definitely hooks him. It's amazing. The team that's leading, you know, the, the split to 50, and from our vantage point to our left is all burn orange. And from our vantage point to the right is the OU side. And as the winner starts to become more and more obvious, you see that side full jam-packed and eh, we start to see mm. people starting to head out Weisner showing a lot of fight eventually five or six surrounded there's not a single person in this Texas section that's left no, at all they're not leaving Laura yeah exactly hey guys Brent Venables is looking for a strong stand from this defense he just challenged them on the sideline and said they are whooping us in all three phases now's when you show me who you are stand up who are you going to be in this moment also telling him I want to pick six get the ball back take that thing down and score you're our chance to put points on the board I agree with him on that they, they, they might be the only chance to put points on the board as the defense Defense trying to get Wiser to the ground. They do so after a short gain. Stutzman, who else making the tackle? Remember how this game started with those turnovers and opportunities with plus territory for Oklahoma? They had 14 plays in the first quarter alone in Texas' side of the, of the field. Since that first quarter, they have not crossed midfield. Mm. Felt like that was a day or two ago when they were doing that. Third and six, it's Ryan Niblett, who was in the backfield. Now the receiver motions out and comes to this side. Viewers look in that direction. Now scans to his right. Man wide open. Pitches it down to Gunnar Helm. They just have not accounted for the tight end too often today and he makes a pay converts the third down now, there you go you give him time with rushing three dropping eight he's able to work through his progressions 
Nice job. He worked from his left, came all the way back to the right. Maybe his fourth option there. He checks it down to the tight end. It was just kind of waiting there, as, as I say, a check down and finds him. Helms had a heck of a day getting the football and showing what he can do after the catch. Any opponent for Texas, beginning with Georgia next week, is going to have to look at a lot of tape and figure out what they can do, have a plan for Gunnar Helm because Michigan couldn't stop him. Oklahoma hasn't stopped him, and the, the way Sark designs these plays makes yep. it very tricky. Jake Majors this time gets bent over. Watch 65. This, again, the fear when you get rolled up on, and he goes all the way back trying to protect that leg, that right leg. He's still on the field, so good news for Texas fans. You don't want to lose the veteran. No. That's a scary grimace that he had. Those braces yeah, yeah. save a lot of knees. Yep. Pitch to the end zone. Leaping attempt. Incomplete. Golden went up for it. Caught it. Could not get the foot down. You know, Ewers on this drop back, he takes a hitch, and I think it makes the ball just a little bit late. It's a small thing. Watch his footwork. If he doesn't take a hitch and he just gets the ball out, see that hitch right there? That's the difference between having enough room out there and just being a little bit late. And that hitch cost him a potential touchdown against Bowen. So third and goal. Pitch to the edge. Wisner trying to work his way back, but they were all over him. Kip Lewis makes the tackle. They're still flying around over there. That Oklahoma defense playing with a lot of pride. Lord just talked about Brent Venables challenging them, saying, hey, you, you know, we need you get a score. We need you to make a stop. Show me what you got. They continue to battle, even though the score is at 24-3. Force the short field goal attempt from Auburn to extend the lead to 24. This is from 29 yards out. And Auburn makes it two for three on this Saturday. Talked about the food at the safe there. There's still time, Kirk, to get you. Didn't sit well with the Longhorns, by the way. They, they took note of that picture that Stutzman posted. Hawkins on the move. Flips it down, and it's Thompson taking a hit after about six yards. I showed that picture to Ewers. He said, does that make you mad? And he said, this yes, he, it does. That's how he came in today. Horns down on the necklace. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you, you earn the right to brag and to sell swag when you win. And it's going to be apparently Texas's turn to do that. Barnes smothered. Nothing there. Maurice Blackwell. I should say this to, to defend Oklahoma a bit. What they've been dealing with. Everyone's going to look at this score and say Oklahoma and the SEC. Come on. No, 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 no. Oklahoma's defense healthy is ready for the SEC. Oklahoma's offense with their top five receivers with the offensive line. that has been a disarray with injuries going to a true freshman quarterback. It's it's just their margin of error is so small. I'm not making excuses for them, but they're depleted on offense right now. And bobbled eventually dropped by Reagans. They, they made some miraculous plays a deep shot a pick six to beat Auburn gritty victory on the road last week but that's where they're gonna have to manufacture wins yeah. in this conference yeah. until they get some guys back healthy you got to get healthy and you got to get a quarterback that can go through his progressions and they're just not they're just not there right now. I think they all thought when the season started Jackson Arnold would be that guy number 11 and he's been replaced a couple of games ago by Hawkins and they're just there's they're kind of a they're going to be some good moments. There's going to be some tough moments with where they are. Hawkins flushed on fourth down. And he just flips it away. No chance to make a play. Couldn't do that on fourth down. Yeah, I mean, Texas takes over. Again, that, that's an example with, in a perfect world, a guy like Michael Hawkins, who's in that developmental stage of his career, there's a guy in front of him playing, and he's learning and watching and growing. But he's forced to be out there and play. And, and you're seeing... His youth now down the road, he'll be a, he's gonna be a great player. He's got all the physical traits, but he just games moving fast for him. Not a lot of help around him, and it's easy to point the finger at him. But this is a, it's a group effort. 
That's South Carolina at home next. So got to go to Mississippi at Missouri at LSU. That's what's ahead for yeah. Oklahoma in the SEC. And by the way, they have Alabama oh. coming in to Norman. Yeah. Not easier. It's Double pass on. again. They're going to try it. Golden chucks into the end zone. And this time they make the catch. He threw into double coverage, but coming down with the football, his helm there. And it was such a bad throw the first time. He said, Coach, let me try it again. I, I'll tell you what, this should have been picked. I don't know how this ball was not picked. Give Helm a lot of credit for going up there and high pointing the football to take it away from Robert Spears Jennings. But I can't believe he caught that. Gibson gets the handoff and muscles down near the one. You don't see that too often. A double pass with a receiver. The first one is laughable. Right. You give right. him another chance. This should never have been thrown. Right. He threw, a, you know, like a fair catch up. If you threw that to the outside, he's laughing. It's a touchdown. Before they get ready for Georgia next week, they may want to have uh, throwing practice with these running backs and receivers to see who gives you the best chance. You know, with the way Gunnar Helm is playing, I throw him anything. Just throw it anywhere. And he, and he comes down with it. How about him getting up at 6-5? Went up and found that football and brought it down. Kid's a baller. Tremendous athlete. Leading receiver. 91 yards after that. 20-yard gain. Ewers will run it in. Takes a shot in the end zone, but builds the lead. And Texas getting some sweet payback today for some recent losses to the Sooners. I can't help but think, you know, it's, it's 27 to 3 with five minutes to go. You just stop them on fourth down. You're at the 25 yard line. I know where you're so, going. I'm like, he's calling a double pass. It's part of a rivalry, right? I think they. they they're not only doing this, they seem to be enjoying it as well. He enjoyed that. Yeah. It was a nightmarish start. Back-to-back -back years, Ewers shaky early through a pick. Was really off his game the entire first quarter. Got it going for the last three quarters. So. Your thoughts on that? You can pick that game. I, you know, in preseason, I picked Oregon to win the national title. Yeah. Ohio State. But you picked Ohio State to win the Big Ten. I know. I did. Mixed message, my friend. Yeah. All State bus is here. What's your All State good hands play of the weekend so I, far? I will use the, the play from here with Silas Bolton, who's blocking in the backfield. Back gets out. He's kind of trailing. He's hustling. Maybe going down to celebrate. I think he's hustling and just in case that happens. And he's right there to jump on top of it. Went 55 yards to secure that. That was a big play in this game because Oklahoma, they were right there. Stutzman's about to jump on that on that fumble. Would have been their ball, but... Bailed Weisner out. He, yeah. he was in fifth gear. When he saw the ball lose, he hit to sixth okay. gear. Right? <laughs> he accelerated, right? He did. You know, that's the, that's the new world of the 12-team playoff. You, you could see Ohio State maybe winning the Big Ten in Indianapolis. Then you throw all those teams into that playoff. Sure. Oregon could get hot, but, oh, man, Ohio State haven't played anybody great. Played Iowa, played Michigan State find out really how good they are are they in there with texas and georgia some of the elite teams or is oregon that team barnes run hawkins completing 12 of 19 today but just 93 yards still hasn't thrown an interception this season but just couldn't generate anything in the air to the end zone and he was pressured and hit sacked five times holly well, guys, I actually talked to some of the Texas players about being ranked number one, how they talked internally about that. And Jake Majors, the center and leader of this team, said, you know what, we've said it's cool, but we don't care. We only care about being ranked number one on January 20th. Long way to go and a major test coming up. There's the lone SEC unbeaten team with the Dogs in Austin next Saturday night. Pitch inside, and that's Carrion, the freshman from Odessa. With just his second catch of the season for 13 yards. There's the majors. Yep. Good forward to sitting down with him next week in Austin. Just one of the great, like, cerebral guys. Just, you know, when they say coach on the field, they mean that. A lot of times a coach will throw that term out there. That dude has, like, coach-level knowledge of protections. Hawkins again. You've seen this so often, just trying to sprint to the sidelines for anything he can create, and that wasn't much. Now they're trying to hit the, the wheel route, the back sliding out of the backfield, Taylor Tatum, but Texas took that away, and so he just got out of there as quickly as he could and took off.
got some positive yards anyway. <laughs> Hand up inside to Tatum, knocked down. Well, Texas is going to continue to be a flag on the play. One of the most uh, impressive defenses in college football at about the halfway point. Holding office number 76. 10 yard penalty, second down. They're a nightmare on third down. They get after the passer. Really hard to run the ball on. Lead the SEC in interceptions. Seven. Don't have any today, but. Yeah. There's not many weaknesses to, to spot. No, and then now they're attacking down here. Watch this. Oh, you pulls this way. And then I don't know if it's a false cue, a false read for the linebackers, but they're pulling left and then running right. Still working at Telly in three minutes to go. I like, like. Yeah. <laughs> Get the golden hats Where's ready. Cup? Longhorns are going to enjoy wearing them today. Where's Cupper? Is he, is he out there? He is. Oh no, there's another pass rush, but there was just no holding penalty thrown. I think let's just get this thing over with because yeah. there, there was a, a, a tackle just about made to keep Hawkins from getting leveled there. Bill Norton was charging through there after the quarterback. Sarkeesian will obviously spot some things that they want to clean up and improve upon the start for one on offense but got to be pretty pleased there. by the way There's we have Cooper. spotted oh Cooper Manning Arch's dad Peyton Eli's older brother he's there's, there's Ellen yeah. Ellen's in charge of Coop Cooper's my favorite Manning he's the funniest of the, of the oh, brothers. yeah, yeah. Get a, get he, a big ass he, hat he, on he told me he keeps get a really low hat. profile he's wearing a hundred gallon hat in there but <laughs> <laughs> that's a good look he, he, report, he reports in to, the, he, to his he, left arm. Right. I guess his orders are to keep a low profile and not get spotted because he's usually better. Well, that's how you know, you're going to get spotted when you wear that or a hat like that, like big tex. <laughs> um, oh, his dad used to keep a low profile headsets at the radio call. Watching right, right. Peyton and Eli. He had a radio show with Cooper a long time ago. Hawkins takes off. You call him Cooper or Cooper? Well, I know, I know what you're doing, as, yeah. the, as the family would say. Ar Arch Cooper. says Cooper. Cooper, yeah. Well, but C O O P E R. Cooper. Outside of New Orleans is normally Cooper. Anyway, whatever. He's he's a proud dad. He's interesting. He, you know, played some football at Ole Miss. Didn't get the the height and arm talent of the other brothers. Great receiver. He's a good athlete. Great athlete. And that's the uh, famous Golden Hat Trophy sitting on the medical cart. Appears to be a stretcher there. It'll make its way to the field. And we are exactly two minutes away from Texas. Grabbing that trophy. You can take it right off the base. And pass it around. Hawkins sprinting again to the sidelines and tracked down by the very speedy Venda, a guy who can clock 22 miles per hour in the catapult system. Yeah, he, he can go. You know, it's the first time that Oklahoma has crossed midfield since the first quarter when they started a, a drive or two in plus territory. Hawkins dumps it down, catch made. Hit delivered. This Longhorn defense continues to be fired up. Hit laid on Tatum. You know, a couple of years ago, the dramatic comeback as the hat makes its way out here. Caleb Williams had that hat on. It was an amazing comeback. Lincoln Riley's last year here. But sandwiched around that, you know, Gabriel a year ago, Caleb Williams, and then two of the last three years now have been emphatic Texas victories. So Right. Players on both sides have experienced some real highs and lows, some amazing Holy wins number 10. for these OU seniors and two really lopsided losses at the yep. hands of their rival. Yep. So much focus on these two teams coming into the SEC, but when you get close to the programs, it's, it's as much about OU Texas as it is joining the SEC. Such bragging rights on the line. A lot of these guys played high school football together like most rivalries. Quinn Ewers has bragging rights. By the way, his girlfriend Maggie goes to Oklahoma. She's from Texas. They knew each other before. And he'll he'll 
visitor. She was sitting, by the way, with the Ewers family, not rooting for her school, but yep. rooting for the boyfriend, which is a smart move. Catch made by Kearney. Texas defensive line starter studs still out there in the field. You see Sorrell, you see Broughton still out there. 45 seconds to go. Yep. Giving them the opportunity to finish the job, I guess, on the field. Pitch made. Kearney steps out. 35 seconds to play. I have to check the status of Isaiah Bond. Not only reporting he left. Certainly want to have everybody healthy. It's Michael Huff there. Yes, it is. Saw him last night at dinner. He has a position with the athletic department here. He's kind of a mentor, big brother to a lot of players. The former great Longhorn great. A stud. Tremendous safety. Look out. Ball pitched out by Hawkins. Again, they, they're just grabbing people on the way by. And thankfully, the flags are not being thrown. Xavier Robinson made the catch. It is a first down for Oklahoma. Yeah, he pulled Anthony Hill down there. Was keeping for this keep this game moving, it looks like. Flips it down again. And the catch is made by Xavier Robinson. Guys way down in the depth chart for Oklahoma getting a chance to touch the football in this rivalry game. Not the Personal way he imagined it. Passer. Defense number 88. High hit. At the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. And Sorrell has made a big impact today. Too late on that hit. And now he'll come out. Yeah, this thing is going all the way down, even though it's out of reach. They're still sending messages to each other. Sorrell just finished that, and that's why they called that. Finished him into the ground. What do you make of it? Not that play, but the idea that Texas is starters still out there I, laying the wood. And I think it has as much to do with not wanting to give up a touchdown to, to OU as it is about just trying to finish the game. I don't think these guys want to come off the field. They don't want to give up a score. Hawkins across the middle. And it's too high for Jake Roberts. Down to seven seconds to go. Yeah, he had him there. That opened up nicely for him. The pass on incomplete. That hat fits no one, by the way. You can just kind of perch it on the top of your head. <laughs> right. Second down, goal to go. And the winners never care. When yours, his final go round, he said, You're not coming back yet again, are you? I mean, in, in theory, he has another year, but th this is it. He'll have two wins and a heartbreaking loss a year ago as the starting quarterback in this rivalry. Put three seconds back on, so time for a couple more plays for Oklahoma. Second and goal. Pressured and still alive and just flips it out of bounds with two seconds to go. So Texas fighting and defending the last few yards here, trying to keep him out of the end zone. Lowly knocked that ball out. The ball came out, got it back, and threw it away. I don't tell the players on either side this last place of formality. <laughs> no, this is it. It's a big one here. Two seconds to go. Last play. No shot. Air mailed way out of the end zone, and that's it. Texas slow start strong statement after that 34 unanswered as they clobber the Sooners number one looked like it today and they will roll back home to Austin take on the Georgia Bulldogs in prime time next Saturday 6-0 for the first time since the 2009 season, which took them all the way to the championship game yep. against Alabama. And let's go to Laura.
All right, thanks, Chris. Coach, you never take a rivalry win for granted. How was this one made possible today? Well, our defense played fantastic. You know, they did a great job stopping the run. Um, things got a little dicey early on in the ball game, and then, you know, we kind of settled in offensively and got going in the second quarter. You want to grab this golden hat? It's right here. Yeah, we'll let you put it on. Yeah. We'll take, let me take the hat. Let me take the hat. Let me take the hat here. Oh, my gosh. Let me take the hat. Yeah, let me take the hat. Oh, it fits you How's well. It, How's it, it, look? it looks, looks pretty good. I think so. All right, so Quinn Ewers, redemption for him in this game. How would you describe his poise, his maturity, coming off of injury to lead this team? Well, it's like anything. When you when you wait that long to play, about a month off, you know, there's a little bit of rust. But I thought he settled in and made some really competitive plays, especially on third down. All right, you may have to pass this hat over to Quinn Ewers, but yeah, Holly's with him at? right now. Where's he at? <laughs> Well, I have Quinn right here. This is a South Lake, Texas young man. This means something to you. What is it like to get that hat back? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome to get the hat back. You know, we didn't have it for a year and for us to, for us to get it. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Put, put, put it on. Put it on. Man, it, feels, it feels good to finally have it back. And uh, couldn't be more proud of the guys. And all the hard work we put in, it's good to it's good to finally get back out on the field with my guys. You know, I missed two games, and you know, I didn't I didn't fully play the way that I wanted to, but I, I think overall the way that we play football, that that's what gives us chances to win games is just the complimentary football that we do play as a whole. Every time we cover you, it seems like your resilience always stands out. How were you processing an early pick and then coming back with a quick touchdown after that? Yeah, um, I think it's just like the veteran in all of us. You know, I think we've we played a lot of ball. We understand, you know. Adversity is going to strike, and um, at the end of the day, it's how you come back and it's how you respond. It's it's 90, it's 10 percent what happens to you, 90 percent of how you react. So, um, you know, I just lean on Jesus, and and he just continues, continues to to put me through adverse times. How are you feeling physically after really testing out that oblique? I feel good. I, I mean, I feel good. I didn't really have any issues with it. And uh, again, I'm just I'm just glad to, to have the gold to have back. Couldn't be more proud of everybody. I'm trying so hard to let you celebrate this moment, but you know I have got to ask about next week. A huge game looming as you host Georgia for the first time there at DKR. How do you process this moment, but how quickly do you move on? Yeah, we're going to enjoy this one on the ride back. Um, you know, have, have 12 hours or so, and then it's on to the next, you know. We're, we're, where we want to be at the end of the season, we're going to have to continue and continue to get better. That's what championships teams do. So um, we're going to we're going to enjoy this one for the next 12 hours or so. Sounds great. Love the hat. Looks really good on you. Thank you, Miss Holly. Have a good one. It's like the Stanley Cup. It gets passed it's around. Let, let, let Quintravian Weisner wear that thing. Let Gunnar Helm yeah, wear it. Right. And let Anthony Hill, representing the defensive effort, wear that hat too. Great night in the SEC. We're off to Baton Rouge momentarily. The Rebels and the Bayou Bengals. That's a terrific rivalry. Good showcase of quarterbacks. And then next Saturday, we talked about 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Alabama still trying to regain their footing after that monster victory against Georgia. The loss to Vandy. Shaky today against Tennessee. And then in prime time, what do you make of this Texas team having to back up an emotional rivalry game, go back home against Georgia? Carson Beck and the dogs lighten it up this afternoon, by the way. Yeah, I mean, Georgia used the loss to Alabama to recalibrate, get themselves right, and they look like they're trending in the right direction. We expect them to as they get ready to go to Austin. Texas is going to have no place. It's a huge game for them. Obviously, this is a, this is one you look forward to all year, but they'll have no problem putting this one behind them. There's so much going on in Austin next week. I mean, it is it is one of those games, and you mark on the calendar in August, so they'll be ready to roll. Can't wait to get down there. Game day, our primetime broadcast, Formula One on Sunday. The world have its eyes on Austin, Texas. We enjoyed this one. It was one-sided, but every one of these is unique and special. Bill Bennell produced it. Jimmy Plant directed it. Thanks to our entire crew. And for Holly and Laura, for Curb Street, and our entire team here in Dallas, Chris Brown is saying so long from the Cotton Bowl. The day is burnt orange, 34 to 3. Kevin Nagandi to keep things going in the studio. Chris, thank you so much.